economy, you better make sure that you have your act together because we will rip your guts out. With an economy not dominated by corruption, with banks that can absorb shocks and with a way to assume, assure investors that things won't go to pieces if the government falls. Otherwise, you risk the 1996 equivalent of a military coup, a market coup. They destroy you through this money, which is more dangerous than any CIA move against you. We go on. Let's talk about the Japanese so that you could see where they are. It says crisis in banking in Japan, but implications are global. Remember, none of this applies to us in Africa. We got food, we got wood. If Africa shut the borders and just traded with each other, which is the best thing in the world you could do, we'd be better off because what is it that you need outside your border? And with Japan in this shape, Japan, you can buy anything you want, OK? You, you, you're the finance minister of, of the Congo. You want an airplane factory? You got diamonds, uranium? Japanese will put a factory there. They will need some food. You want some food? You want some wood? You want some this? So you're already in the key bargaining position. And you barter. You don't go through the IMF loan sharks. You barter. And that's how countries are coming back to. That's why the Japanese, the Chinese, everybody was at that meeting when they met there, that when Clinton ran to. But you can't understand that. So when Kabila is going to Switzerland, he's going to get that money back out of them banks, the same way the Jews are squeezing the Swiss. You just tell them, look, you want some oil to heat so you don't freeze this winter? You ship the money back. You do it from power. Japan's economy is in recession. Its stock market is down 60% over eight years, and its currency has cascaded 43% from its high. This is an increasing consensus among Japanese politicians, though not through the economies, that the problem centers on the challenge that the government goes on here. And I'm only going to have the article, I'm only going to read the key parts. The centerpiece, now Japan is in big trouble. The economy, the banks are collapsing. Look at what they say. The banks in Japan have $600 billion in debt. It can't collect from those Asian countries. It can't, the scheme is not working. So what happens? What do they do? Listen how they do it. The same thing they did to you in the United States. The centerpiece, now Japan is trying to extricate itself from this $600 billion debt. The Chinese have forced the United States and Japan to support the yen so it doesn't drop. Know what the Japanese are going to do. The centerpiece of this total plan that the Japanese government would, would be the creation of a government bridge bank, B-R-I-D-G-E. Remember what the South Koreans did to their people? They took all that private debt, and then they assumed it and gave the debt to the government, right? And who pays the bill? The people. This bridge bank they're going to build, that would take over the, the loan portfolio of the failing banks, reselling good loans and writing off bad loans with the taxpayers absorbing the losses. Just like they did to you with this, this bank crisis. And you want to tell Angola to be to run your country like this? You want to tell Kabila this is the mess you want to join? These dishonest crooks. Europeans are dishonest crooks. We got honest crooks, they're dishonest crooks. <laughs> and it goes on, and I can give you this later. Two, four, six, eight, ten. The 20 of the top. Japanese banks are all bankrupt, according to their records. They're broke. So if you want to be a good Japanese, and if you're an African, you want to imitate to Japanese, go ahead. What I would like to do as we give you the, the, the uh, this second handout, we're going to go, because we have the time, into missiles and atomic energy to see how it ties in in relation that gives China its power. Yeah. There's one that is an original. Just hold on to original. 
In this handout, you will see uh, dealing with the three things that you need in order to deliver atomic bombs or hydrogen bombs into a country. It's very important because these nuclear weapons give you a leverage. <coughs> very important leverage you need to keep these monsters off your back. And you will see how China keep, kept them off their back when they threaten them with the financial. Basically, you have the Earth. You have a missile. This missile, you must have missiles. Specifically, ICBMs. And they must be able to travel 6,000 miles at least. You strike each other over the North Pole. Because the people who are giving you the trouble in Europe and America are in the Northern Hemisphere. So you know, that's why you're going to use the North Pole. You come across the North Pole, and whatever country decides to launch, and you have the United States sitting here. Or you can add Europe. You come across the North Pole to strike. But in order for you to come across, you have to have a satellite. You have to have a targeting satellite so that you can get your guidance system. So whenever you see a country like India that has a space agency that's launching their own satellites, they got the satellites. They have these very powerful rockets, the most powerful because they brought them from Russia. So they have the capability to deliver, they have the satellite, and they just, they just set off five atomic and one hydrogen bomb, so they got it. We don't know how close India it is from its ability to strike the United States. And India told you after the Iraqi war, don't fight the United States without nuclear weapons. So if you look at this diagram, you will see the three components. You need the missile, you need the satellite, and you need the warhead. And there was a General Walters from the United States government that was a UN ambassador. He said his job was to go around to different countries and give them an uh, 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 offer they couldn't refuse. And you know part of the offer was, we'll kick you behind with this and our economy. This is what you need to strike. Who had this capability? China, Russia, India. So you don't want nuclear blackmail on them. You swing over and go up. You see the space shuttle? The space shuttle has two basic purposes. It's to deal with satellites. Satellites must be placed, repaired, and recovered. Because without satellites, you cannot have any kind of, um, of uh, electromagnetic communication. You can forget all your TV, all your radio, all your, your phones, and all the military. You must have satellites because a satellite put 22,000 miles above the Earth stays above that point. It's called a geodetic orbit. So if you put it lower, if you put it 22,000 miles above the Earth, as the Earth spins, it will stay over that position. And then you beam from something here, you hit here, and you come down. That's how you get all your satellites, all your TV, everything. If you lose, if the United States loses the capacity to, to put satellites, repair and recover them, you can forget it. Communication, telecommunication. That's why you need communications through the ground, as well as the satellites. So you don't give up your ground communication. That's how important that space shuttle is. Also, it's important for the International Space Station. This is critical because in order for you to try to, to rectify your country, in order for China to be able to make this threat to the United States, it had to have certain things in place. You know when a guy comes to you, the long, long shark, and you want to break your leg. But you see, when you put your hand in your pocket, he's not sure. So you back him off. So. That's why the space station is important, for those satellites, and they're building an international space station. The international space station is built by the trilateral countries, 16 countries, all white except for Japan. So it's those trilateral countries, Russia, Japan, and the trilateral. Who's the trilateral? Look at Western Europe. England, France, Spain, Portugal, Germany, all your former colonial powers, because they're now hooking up to try to get as much dominance in space 
for telecommunications and other things. But also what is happening, let's look at the space station. There's trilateral countries. Russia is part of it, because Russia is not an official trilateral country. It's going to cost them $40 billion. You'll pay for it. It's going to be for civilian and military, and they're projecting the year 2000. What they're doing is they're putting a lot of plutonium there. And what they were attempting to do is to develop the capability to be able to shoot down. So for instance, if China loses the ICBM, you got half an hour, you can't knock it out. But if you had in this space station, as one of your goals, the ability to send down a powerful laser to destroy these bases, you neutralize the threat. Then the blackmail comes back. In other words, the United States can't blackmail China, India, Pakistan, the countries anymore because they have the bomb. They have the delivery system. So you try to get one up on them. So when they keep going up in those space shuttles, they're putting together a space station to get an advantage over you again. Because remember, these are basically Germans. They came on the world scene, as Professor Mackey teaches us through the history, as marauders. And they're still scavenging. Let's go over to the left side. Satellites. You want some satellites? You can get it from China, India, Pakistan, North Korea, or Russia. So we can buy satellites. We don't have to worry about the West selling it to us. We can purchase it. When we get our factories, we can make it. Who will launch it for you? China will launch it. India will launch it. Japan will launch your satellites. Russia will launch it. The US and Europe may not launch it for you. Europe launches their space station is in French Guiana. The space station for Russia is in the former Kusistan. That's off limits. The, the Asians don't let the Russians use it anymore, so they got to come to America. You want to get missiles? You got China, India, North Korea, Pakistan, or Russia. You want to get the uranium you need to make the bomb if that's what you want? You got all the uranium in Africa. You can buy from China, India, North Korea, Pakistan, and Russia. Now let's go on the bottom half here because you, when you understand on how we have to build a continent, you have to deal with it as a comprehensive. You need your economists, you need them growing the food, but you also need somebody dealing with weapons for protection, telecommunication. You have to be brought up so that you'll be in a position to compete. Uranium is, is a fuel, and it's uranium-239. And uranium-239, 238, uranium-230, 238, 238, and you have uranium-235. This is the uranium isotope that is fissionable. You can split it to get energy. This is not. But when you mine the uranium, 99.3% is this uranium, and only 0.7% is this fissionable. So you must get a lot of uranium and you must process it or enrich it so that you bring the fuel content down to 235 has to be brought, uranium 235 has to be brought up to 3%. In order to enrich it, when you hear about they're trying to stop this technology, you need centrifuge, you need magnets and stuff. So what the United States is attempting to do is block the sale of nuclear reactors to different countries because in order to use a nuclear reactor, to, you want to take uranium here and you stick it into your nuclear plant, like you burn a piece of coal or some oil. When you take uranium and put it into a nuclear plant and split the atom, you produce heat. This heat is then used to boil water, and the water is then used to steam to run generators to generate electricity. So what is the most, what's the most important part of a nuclear plant? to generate electricity, right? But when you generate electricity, when you look at the nuclear reaction of uranium-238, 235 uranium, and you get plutonium plus heat, this plutonium can be put into another, another type of nuclear reactor called a breeder reactor to get more energy. But it can be siphoned off as the bomb. Any country that has a nuclear reactor can make bombs. Because the byproduct of burning uranium in the nuclear plant to generate heat, you get plutonium, and that plutonium you put in the breeder reactor here, and then you get the material you need. So you need a certain amount of uranium to produce a certain amount of plutonium, 
which you can then siphon off with bombs, and that's how they try to calculate. Any country can do this. Russia told you, I'll sell you anything. Russia's given tra trading with Iran three nuclear plants, trading with India three nuclear plants. Africans can buy it anytime they want. When they, if and when they get ready, they will sell it to you. So you don't have any problem there. You have money, you will buy whatever it is that you need. As we go on, North Korea plans to continue the missile development. So we get a little more detail. So even though we're now dealing with the IMF, Okay, let me do this first. Let's tie in China in terms of, of uh, this important article in case we run out of time. China. China is here. Okay. In 1996, there was a dispute between China and the United States. And China is here, and Taiwan is here. Japan is up here. The second fleet is here. For whatever the reason China wanted to do it, it started threatening Taiwan. It started shooting missiles from China across the Taiwanese Strait, it's overshooting Taiwan, OK? And one of the things they were doing was threatening to block up the shipping lane. Because if missiles are coming over, they say they were practicing. Somebody's going to shoot a missile over you to practice you're not going to bring your ships in. So what they were doing was disrupting the trade. Plus, they were threatening. They built up their forces. The United States says to China, look, you can't do this. The United States goes to these Asian diplomats, the Burmese, the Vietnamese, and say, why don't we all get together against China? So the diplomats of Asia say, wait, you just got here 50 years ago. China's been here for 3,000. It's going to be here when you're gone. So that, that mixed all of that. In other words, you're on your own. The United States told China that if they move against Taiwan, they're going to make a war on China. Well, China said, look, we can't sit around and be pounded like Iraq. So we go to Saturday, April 5th, 1997 when Buchanan is talking again. They don't like this man. And what is he saying? And I read you. With his blunt, with his blunt statement. So this was in 1997. He's reporting on what China told the United States in 1996 over this Taiwan thing. With his blunt statement to China that America will fight to defend Taiwan, Newt Gingrich put on the table for national debate this question. So Gingrich goes to China and says, we're going to fight. We'll fight you over Taiwan. That's what he said in 1997. But Gingrich forgot what the Chinese told him in 1996. And then Luke Gingrich is asking the question, will America go to war over an island that China claims as its sovereignty? The question is immediate and mortally serious. Two years ago, a Chinese official told a visitor that United States would not interfere with the recovery of Taiwan because we like Los Angeles too much. <laughs> Implication. China will risk nuclear war rather than permanent loss of Taiwan. China has, that they tell you, 19 ICBMs. When you use nuclear weapons, depending upon the size, Nuclear weapons can deliver a certain amount of energy or destruction. When you want to destroy a whole city, like you want to take out your New York City completely, you go to hydrogen weapon, much more energy. They call them city busters. Now, Russia has, on, one, on their missiles, they have the capacity to deliver about 10 million megatons, they say. 10 million megatons will destroy New York City. China has 19 ICBMs, and 13 are permanently targeted to United States. They told them what we will do when this war starts, we're going to first destroy LA, and then we take out the western coast of the United States, and we work our way over. Now, you may have 10,000 nuclear weapons, 
And maybe out of that 10,000, you may have 2,000 or 1,500 that you can drop on us. But you can't take 13 hydrogen bombs. You can forget Boston, New York, Washington, D.C., all your ports. You can destroy the country. That's what backed the United States up, or for that war. And when China can now deliver the threat of devaluating this dollar, the United States can no longer come to it with a gun and say, this is what you do, like they threatened Ho Chi Minh. Ho Chi Minh said, drop the bomb. I'm not stopping the war. The United States and Russia have used these weapons as blackmail to people, or white mail. It's really white mail. OK? And it goes on, and the Chinese says, as the commander as the vice commander of the Beijing Academy of Military Sciences said a year ago, 1996, as for the United States, for a relatively long time, it will be absolutely necessary that we quietly nurture our sense of vengeance. Payback. We must conceal our abilities and bide our time. The quote introduces the coming conflict with China goes on. So what we're saying is, you got a world that has rapidly changed, and still rapidly changing. Korea is dealing with their missiles here. And they tell you, we have them that go 3,000 miles. They're, they're for sale. This nuclear reactor business, North Korea officials have announced that they are suspending their effort to carry out the 19, 1994 nuclear freeze agreement. What to show you as we tail in, as we wind down, to show you how important nuclear weapons are. North Korea this is North Korea and, Ch and South Korea, China. North Korea has nuclear reactors and, and they get plutonium to make bombs. So North Korea has the plutonium for the bomb. So what North Korea does is this. They fire these missiles across Japan, and there's 600 miles missiles, and now they've got one that goes 3,000 miles. So what is North Korea saying? I have nuclear plants, and I have the ability to deliver. I'm in the ball game. You're going to have to negotiate. So United States make a deal with North Korea, say, look, don't shut down these reactors. Don't use them, and I'll give you something for it. Let's see what they're offering. North Korean officials have announced that they are suspending the effort to carry out the 1994 nuclear freeze agreement that, ha that was intended to dismantle the country's nuclear program, protesting that United States had failed to honor promises to send fuel oil. North Korea said, well, if I'm using these plants to make energy, electricity, but you really don't want me to use them because you know I'm going to get the bomb as a byproduct, you want me to shut them down? Well, you got to replace my energy need. So the United States said, OK, we'll give you what? The they, United States was supposed to send fuel oil. A high-ranking member of the North Korean government told a visiting academic under, and he said, because you're not sending the oil, we're going to unseal the nuclear reactor under the agreement was to have been closed permanently. They said, OK, we, we, we're going to open it up again. We're going to start using it again. You know when we start using it to make electricity, what we're going to make more of? Plutonium. Barred technicians from packing the last of the reactors spin fuel. When you have a nuclear reactor, when these fuel rods are used, the uranium is put on rods, like shish kebab. And when, the, and when the reaction changes, the plutonium are located on these rods. You take out the plutonium rod, and you send them to reprocess them. It is these rods with the plutonium that North Korea was supposed to seal and then ship out. Say, OK, we'll do it. Now, you think you're going to tell the United States how many rods you got? <laughs> so this is what the deal was. So they said, tell the technician, stop packing the last of these reactor rods for shipment out of the country. The rods contain plutonium that can be used in nuclear weapons. They said, OK, America, you won't ship the fuel because South Korea Japan and America, who all, all want them to shut down the plant. Because South, North Korea threatens South Korea, it threatens Japan. So it was South Korea, Japan, and America who were supposed to fund all of this fuel and stuff so they'll stop using the reactor. Well, of course, Japan is broke, so they're not sending anything. China is, uh, South Korea is broke, 
And the United States is broke. So nobody's sending them the oil. So they said they're going to reopen the plant. This is, in, in America, the saying when they reopen a nuclear plant, this is how they describe it. This is like someone dusting off his old 45 and making sure that it shines, but not loading it. See, you have to be able to get the message. Under the 1994 agreement, North Korea pledged to dismantle its nuclear program in exchange for American promise to coordinate the building of two lightweight reactors. So in other words, they don't want you to use this one. They want you to use another reactor that doesn't generate plutonium. But of course, United States didn't build the reactors, and they didn't ship the oil because they don't have the money or the material to do it. To coordinate the building of two lightweight reactors to generate electricity and to deliver 500 metric tons of oil annual annually. So the reason that I show you the article or to read about it is to show you how important these nuclear reactors are just with the threat. Korean Central News Agency expressed deep displeasure with the pace of the UN, US, US effort, hinted that the North Korean government might restart its nuclear program. North Korea should no longer lend an ear to these empty promises that goes on. And then we talk about we're going to end, as we end up, we're going to talk very briefly about the Chinese missiles that they sold them. United States sold, United States private businesses sold China's. United States wants to, wants to launch satellites, okay? But they don't have the capability, a lot of American launches of their satellites blow up. So they're looking for other sources. They go to the Europeans, they're not good. So what the United